Hi, I'm Deka, and it is with psychotherapists and I talk about different mental health and self-help related topics on this channel. Thank you for being here. Today I'm going to talk about boundary settings, especially in intimate relationships. Boundary setting in intimate relationships clearly involves communicating in a clear and concise, acceptable manner of what's okay in the relationship and what's not okay. This includes physical, emotional, and psychological limits, as well as agreeing on behaviors and actions that show respect and care for each other. The first thing when we are setting boundaries will be identifying our own needs and values. If we don't know what we need, we wouldn't know how to set boundaries around it. This is where journaling could be important if you could write down what's, what do I need in a relationship, right? Reflect on what is important to you and what behaviors you are comfortable with and not. So write down physical touch. What types of physical affection are acceptable and when? Second, write down time and attention. Balancing time with your partner and other relationships and activities is important. Especially if we've had insecure attachments to our either anxious, disorganized or avoidant, we may end up if we are anxiously attached, we end up spending a lot of our time with our partners, forgetting about other activities. If we are avoidant, then we will spend time doing other things and not spend enough time with our partner. If we are disorganized, we will run between the two extremes. So balancing it is very important to be to come across as someone who's secure and to also be secure in the relationship. It's important that you balance your time well. So this is something you can think about and write down in your journal. Third would be personal space and privacy. Respecting each other's need for the alone time and keeping certain information private. So thinking about, okay, when do I need alone time? When does my partner need alone time? How much alone time is good for me? And what is okay for, you know, for me to give my partner? Like, you know, he should, he or she should also have their alone time. And then keeping certain information private, thinking about what I want to keep private. Money and finances. Discussing expectations and agreements on financial responsibilities and decision making is very important. You know, these are some things if we don't think about and when we are put in a long-term relationship, we struggle with it because we ourselves don't know what's okay for us. So it might be good to write these down, to reflect on it. That would be like step one. Second would be communicate clearly. Share your boundaries with your partner in a non-judgmental, assertive way. Use I statements to express how you feel rather than blaming or accusing your partner. It's more like, I feel happy when you do this, or I feel neglected when you don't do this. So really using I statements can be very powerful as compared to, you never care about me, you don't do this, you don't do that. That goes into a blaming stance and doesn't help the relationship. And that also leads to defensiveness. So no one will be able to respond if we go with the blaming stance, but if we go with I feel statements, it can lead to more empathy and a better, healthier relationship. And the third point would be, listen to your partner. Understand your partner's perspective and listen to their boundaries as well. Look for common grounds, areas where you can compromise. So really listening is an important skill. Yes, you're sharing your boundaries, but you also want to listen to your partner's boundaries. Be flexible. Relationships evolve over time. So be open to adjusting your boundaries as needed. Things change, times change, challenges change, so your boundaries will also change. So it's important to be flexible and open to that evolution. Respect each other. Acknowledge and respect each other's boundary, even if they are different from your own. For example, if your partner needs more time and space and you don't, you still want to respect that and negotiate and be like, okay, you know what, it's okay if you need your time. Maybe the Saturday you can spend by yourself and Sunday you spend with me or you spend like half the Saturday with me, half the Sunday with me. Like you can negotiate and to be respectful at the same time. Enforce your boundaries. It's important to follow through on what you have agreed upon. If your boundaries are not respected, speak up and address the issue promptly. So it's important to follow up on it and be consistent. Like this is not okay for me. In extreme cases, you know, there could be 
issues that a couple is facing where boundary setting is very important. For example, if your partner is doing something that's impacting both of you, whether it's financially, whether it's emotionally, you definitely want to set those boundaries and be firm with it. Seek support. If setting boundaries is challenging, consider seeking the help of a therapist or a counselor who will be able to support you in this process. Remember, setting boundary is a key aspect of a healthy relationship and can strengthen the bond between the two partners. Even though initially it might be like, oh, this is causing strain on our relationship because we're not used to setting boundary, but in the long run, you will realize it's actually leading to a healthier relationship. Especially if we had grown up in a household where there was nothing like boundary setting, like what is it? This is a new experience for you. So you want to be patient with yourself, patient with your partner, slowly use these steps, slowly reflect on your own boundaries and start setting them and see progress for yourself. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much for being here.